Hello and welcome to The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst, the show taking you through the world's most terrible mistakes in design. For our episode today, we're going to be looking at some of the worst Kickstarter projects ever made. I'm Jesse, and I'm joined by our two co-hosts. Go ahead and say hi, guys. Hey, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? It's Bruce Joe. So just for our viewers at home, I want to briefly talk about what exactly a Kickstarter is. It's part of a new trend called crowdfunding, and it's probably one of the premier platforms. Essentially what Kickstarter does is it links people's ideas or projects that they can put up on the website to potential backers who can donate as little as usually a few dollars to a project to as much as multiple thousands of dollars. And a lot of the time, these projects can be really interesting and really exciting. Do you guys have anything that you know about that has been Kickstarters that you ended up being like a really big fan of, games-wise, products-wise, or anything else? Yeah, I think Unreal was originally funded to, uh, as a Kickstarter, but it ended up being really, really successful in the end. And really good game. The Fidget Cube was also Kickstarted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my choices would probably be A Hat in Time was originally a Kickstarter game, and that was also very good. And I believe Exploding Kittens was as well. If you guys have ever played that, it's a really fun card game. A lot of board games are crowdfunded nowadays, and they come out really well a lot of the time. Yeah, it's super cool. That being said, there are also some strange projects, some dumb projects, and some projects that just straight up never come to fruition. So can you guys tell me what you picked for today's topic of the worst Kickstarter ever made? Did you ever want a small salt shaker? Well, we got small just for you. It'll brighten up the whole entire room and is possibly one of the worst ideas I've ever heard it's meat soap, and that it is exactly what it sounds like. Soap that smells like meat. Nice soap. and simple. Soap that smells like meat. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. And my... <laughs> don't mm me mm. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and my choice for today was Code Hero, a video game that supposedly was trying to teach people how to code and simply just never came to fruition. So you're telling me the person who doesn't know how to code picked Code Hero. Yes. Out of the... <laughs> Two hey, the CS game, majors in this room. The game never existed anyway. It's fine. I'm the target demographic. Oh, true. Daniel, go ahead and tell me. What did you say it was? Smalt? What is that? <laughs> and why do you hate it? Why do I hate it? Well, tell me why you need a $200 salt shaker. <laughs> well, <laughs> tell me what the product Flex. is first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please explain. So it's a smart salt shaker. Essentially what it is is it's a salt shaker that connects to your phone and it's a Bluetooth speaker and has voice commands. Exactly the things you don't need on a salt shaker. I mean, do I need to say more besides the fact that, like, you can bring up the flavor with somehow shaking your phone in order to pour salt out from a big, what? bulky salt shaker? It's that, like... That's amazing. What? <laughs> what do you mean that's amazing? That's really what? not amazing. What kind of voice commands do you give to a salt shaker? Um, to my knowledge... It depends on like the size of the salt that you can output. Well, oh yeah, I also what? forgot to mention. Wait, the size of the salt? Oh yeah, you can get like a pinch of salt or or a tablespoon of salt or so you can either shake, pinch, or manually dial the salt on the salt shaker. Manually what? The amount of salt. Manually <laughs> dial? Yeah, you're what? Really right. There's a dial on the smartphone app that will increase the amount of salt that you're getting. Great. Great. I'm gl- I always knew that I was just one pinch too high. You know, the best benefit of all, it monitors your salt levels. Yes. You heard that right. Why? I don't know. <laughs> so you're telling me when I put salt on my food, I eat salt? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, you do. That's crazy. And this is connected to the internet, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an app somehow, but it's also a product, so. Why does a salt shaker need to connect to the internet? Great question. <laughs> I'm going to hack into your salt shaker, dude. <laughs> what kind of security protocols does this app use? I mean, you don't see it anywhere on this website. Exactly. But in case you guys want to basically have a portable speaker that's also a salt shaker for some <laughs> reason, use your phone and just a salt shaker. You don't need both at the same time. I mean, I really don't get it. How much did you say this costed? Oh, $199. One ninety, one hundred and ninety nine dollars. Hey, that's under two hundred dollars. That's a steal. <laughs> that's a steal. Steal yeah. the deal. How much does a regular salt shaker cost? Under two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> under two hundred dollars. Yeah. They cost the same. the same. <laughs> yeah. We have a hundred and ninety nine dollar salt shaker that you can use from your phone. That's that's basically what this is. Is there anything else that it does? Flexes on your friends. Okay. Besides flexing your friends, telling them how much money you're willing to spend on a damn salt shaker, um, <laughs> it lights up the room with its intelligent design. And 
It also is a sound system in and of itself. <laughs> so it's a lamp as well as being a speaker and a salt shaker. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. It tries Incredible. to do way too much for just being a salt shaker. Amazing. It sounds like a product that's made for tech enthusiasts who have never taken a CS class in their life. I think it sounds like a great way to show your friends that you have too much money. Yo, Jesse, if I graduate college and if I'm making something like a small you better slap me in the face, please. Bruce is willing to do it too, but never let me embark on a project <laughs> I've been waiting. like this one. I've been waiting, dude. Just oh, give me the word. Oh, I'll no. do it right now. <laughs> he hasn't even made anything yet. Exactly. All right. So our next pick would be my pick. It's a game called Code Hero. And if you've never heard of this game, it's because it really only exists as a demo in the point .2 version, which I believe CS majors over there, can you please correct me and say that's before beta? It is before one. It is indeed before one, mm. the release. <laughs> that is true. It is before one. Mm. Sus? But more importantly, basically what this game is, is it was a game that I, I believe got on Kickstarter around either late 2011 or early 2012. And essentially the idea was you are teaching people how to code by shooting a ray gun filled with code at things. The catch here is you might not think that's like the worst idea ever. But the developer basically took the $170,000 that he raised. And some of his backers, by the way, had paid over $1,000. Two of them even paid over $10,000 each. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. And on top of that, this game just never came out. The point two version that was released in 2014 is the most recent update to the game. The developer behind the game updated it incredibly infrequently with his backers until around a certain point where his backers threatened legal action against him. And at that point, they claimed to keep working on it, but the development, like I said, has gone completely dark since 2014. I think the idea of playing a game and learning code just sounds pretty good in general, and it sounds pretty promising. And it sounds like, you know, you got actually people to learn code. But the issue is, is that none of that actually happened. I was the only one here that played the game, and boy, was that a mistake. I did watch Daniel play the game, and I would like to point out but the first thing that Daniel did, as someone, you know, Daniel's pretty familiar with coding, although not the Unity engine that this game uh, uses. I believe you use Unreal, right? Yes, that's correct. Basically, the first thing that Daniel did was he spawned into the open hub world, the first thing that the game spawns you into, and he just immediately lifted up a wall, walked outside of the hub world, and the game just immediately crashed. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was pretty entertaining. So the website I downloaded the demo from was the sketchiest website in the world. And I told Jesse, there's no way I'm going to download it. And I downloaded it. <laughs> I didn't even Thanks, force Daniel. him to. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> I didn't force him to. I was just like, hey, you want to... Uh, you want to play it? You're a coder. And then he's like, no. And then he downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> and even when I clicked buy on, like, the project took me to a website that Firefox was like, hey, do not go into this website. Sketch. We cannot trust this website. And then it just didn't exist in the first place. So, Yeah, it's really crazy because the press that he got from a lot of like journalists in the gaming field around this time was really positive. Like Even though he'd taken $170,000 and just said, yeah, I ran out of all the money, he claimed to spend it on development costs and travel to industry events essentially like paying other developers' salaries. But the thing is, is that one employee actually claimed to only have been paid $800 from oh. this man. So really, you don't know where the money's going, but a lot of press from around this time were really nice to him. And honestly, you might think that his Kickstarter backers weren't nice to him, but they were. Not only did they actually not follow through with the lawsuit that they threatened, but also when I went back and read the updates that he posted like every like month to three months, for this game that they had put their money towards. They were always like, thank you for the updates. You know, I know they're inconsistent, but I still appreciate them. And it was kind of heartbreaking to see people just support this guy as he took all of their money. Yeah, I think this was made in like the age of Kickstarter where where Kickstarter was still like a really popular thing and people hadn't come to realize just how much of a scam it is at times. Kickstarter considers itself a middleman between the idea and its backers. So. Kickstarter says we'll refund all the money that people put towards it if it doesn't reach its goal. However, once the goal is met, Kickstarter basically just says, nope, okay, it's all it's between you two now. I was just there to connect the two of you, but now it's between you two. And because of that, they don't really do anything in cases like this. 
which, you know, I'm not sure if they should, but it's always just, it's heartbreaking to see people lose their money for essentially a demo that never went anywhere. Yeah, this project feels like it kind of exemplifies everything wrong with Kickstarter, where you get a huge crowd of funding and nothing ever comes of it and everyone just loses all their money. And yeah. the owner or creator of the project can just run away with it and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I think it stems from all these being like great ideas in your head and then when they're actually put into practice, nothing ends up happening. Yeah, and regardless if the guy took the money on purpose or if he just really didn't manage it well like he claims, which I'm not sure if I believe or not. It's just still really, really an ethical issue for me. But anyway, to move on to hopefully more bright topics, Bruce, I want you to tell us about the meat soap right after this break. Hey Bruce, I've been having some real trouble coming up with ideas for our next episode. Have you tried checking our Discord server or our Twitter and Instagram? No, I haven't. Well, right now, we have a Discord server ready for anyone to join, and our listeners can react to our episodes and give suggestions for future ones. It's the best way for us to talk to our listeners and our best way for our listeners to talk to us. Sounds like the person listening should join and tell us what their opinion on what the worst really is. All right, and we're back. Bruce, go ahead and tell me about your pick for the worst Kickstarter project ever made. So what I love about the meat soap is that it was not the execution that was wrong or the purpose that was wrong. It was just simply about this very simple idea. You put animal fat in your soap and you cover yourself with it so you smell like meat. I think fundamentally, this Kickstarter project was very silly. <laughs> you yeah. know, I just think the appeal of smelling constantly like grease is... Perhaps not the best idea in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, I always, you know, I'll be honest, usually I consider showers something that you do to not smell. You know, I think mm -hmm. it's definitely an upgrade for some people. But <laughs> most. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I would definitely not consider it. Yeah, I mean, at least, like, Salt Shaker has a purpose. It still provides you salt. Code Hero was a scam because, you know, its execution was wrong. Meat Soap, I think, just as an idea, was a little fundamentally flawed. If you would like to smell bacon... Wake up 30 minutes earlier, put some strips on your George Foreman grill, and then wake up to the smell of bacon. Don't cover yourself in animal grease and then roll up to your girl's crib and, you know, <laughs> I don't, I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. <laughs> roll up to your girl's crib smelling like bacon. I really like that because, like, a lot of, like, the deodorants or stuff, like, go out of their way to, like, act like they're, like, smell, make you smell a certain way or soap or whatever. Also, especially soap, actually. They have, like, super soft, like, lavender or like you know that type of like really soft like smell and this one's like no bacon no. grease meat <laughs> <laughs> i really do think it's like um a product in that line of like fragile masculinity kind of things you know where you buy viking horn coffee mugs also and another kickstarter soap. project by the way mm -hmm. a very successful one at that too to be fair right so technically this was a successful project though it raised two thousand dollars with like 50 backers it was about 15 dollars for one bar of soap so Technically not that bad. You know, it did, interestingly, execute what it sought out to do very successfully. Had a custom soap mold that was in the shape of a pig, which was interesting. And I guess, um... Wait, ho hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not a bar of soap. They got a custom pig mold to make it a very, you know, have a novelty bar of soap. What can I say? A custom pig mold? So not only do you have a soap that makes you smell like meat is in the shape of a pig. It is in the shape of imagine a pig. Imagine using that, though. I mean, I could just imagine putting it on a loofah and just breaking its head off. I don't think mm -hmm. it's weird to imagine someone using it. I think it's funnier to imagine, like, someone, like, borrowing someone else's shower and just walking in and seeing, like, the, <laughs> like, seeing, like, a bar of soap shaped like a pig and then just picking it up and, like, smelling it and it smells like bacon. Like, huh? What if it's like half used though? Like seriously, like would it break <laughs> half off? A <laughs> or would its head fall off? Would its legs fall off? Like I am confused. Yeah, it would definitely just be like a headless pig for a while, which mm -hmm. is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And the product is very clear about no matter how smell it goods, you cannot eat it because apparently that was a very big worry. A very big worry, huh? What is with people and just eating things nowadays? Tide Pods was like the obvious mm, one a while ago. <laughs> Don't say mmm. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> Forbidden <laughs> snacks, dude. How much did this bar of soap cost? So it's about $15 for one bar of soap, 35 for two. So technically not awful when we're talking about, you know, novelty, specialty items, you know? 
Wait, did I hear you wrong? Was it 15 for one, 35 for two? Doesn't mean it costs more to get two than it costs more to get one pack. To... Hey, you talked to the Kickstarter about that. It was $15 for the one soap tier, then 35 for the two soap tier. No, I didn't hear it wrong. They're just stupid. Wait, that's some basic... Wait, wait. <laughs> that's some basic wait. math issues right there, You probably honestly. get stickers or something there, too, I'm sure. How much does a usual bar of soap cost? Like a like, usual fancy bar of soap. Oh, like fancy that. bar of soap. I was going to say my bar of soap costs like a quarter. Yeah, 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 obviously. I, I, I assume like a fancy bar of soap around would cost around $15, right? Do any of our viewers shop at Bed Bath & Beyond? Please let us know. Because like the usual bar of soap, I would assume is like not a quarter, but like two fifty, right? For like a normal bar of soap, I would say two dollars, two fifty, something mm-hmm. around there. So like you could just get like six bars of regular soap and be set for like a, a while, you know. I think a huge part of it is regular soap is really, really easy to produce. Well, I don't think maybe grease and putting <laughs> it into a soap form is not going to be the most you do efficient use... thing. You do use animal fat for this, yeah. The actual animal fat? Yeah, you use, you use actual animal fat. I mean, generally, like, discarded animal fat, but still, nonetheless. Which and is technically good, you know, use every part of an animal, but maybe not for soap, though. Maybe not for soap. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of the uh, the bacon smell, really. For sure. I mean, it smells good, but not, like, I don't want somebody that I'm talking to to smell like it. Yeah, even, like, smelling it for more than five minutes is, like, disorienting, I think. Yeah. And that was Bruce's case for why Meat Soap was the worst Kickstarter project ever made. And, once again, you guys are listening to The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst. And we're going to come together for one final consensus conversation about which one of these projects is really the worst. Once again, our three choices for the worst project were Code Hero, a game about teaching coding that never came to fruition, Meat Soap, a product that... It it did what it said, and SMALT, I believe an abbreviation for Smart Salt, that is a $200 salt shaker that you can connect to your phone. All right, for our three questions today, we're going to have the first one being, which would you avoid backing of all of these three? If you had, were on Kickstarter, these were your only three choices, which one would you never give your money to? Of course, Hero. That's it. There's no product there. At least I can give... My bacon fat soap bar as like a joke gift, and the smalt as you know, someone somewhere likes it. You know, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So. If you have a billion dollars, then 200 seems like a reasonable price for a salt shaker. <laughs> I would also say Code Hero because I think it's also kind of messed up to give money to someone who's going to steal your money. Yeah, I'd say Code Hero, but that's like something in retrospect, right? If this was 2014, where everyone was still under the impression that it was being developed and that there will be some sort of product, you know, I think it'd be a tougher call to make. I think that's definitely fair. I think you could easily make a justification for it not being Code Hero because of that. But with 2020 hindsight, I, I can safely say that I would avoid backing Code Hero. I would agree. Mm-hmm. Wait, out of the three ideas here, which one do you guys think is just straight up the silliest? I'm going to go first here and say Code Hero is definitely not a silly idea. You know, it had a lot of promise as an idea. And while the demo is terrible and it does not exist eight years after being funded, that does not mean the idea itself was terrible. I'm going to go ahead and say I think the silliest idea is probably the small, smalt. Smalt? Smalt. 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 Anyway, I think it's probably the silliest idea just because who's buying a $200 salt shaker? This was like a joke we did in my marketing 101 class where it'd be like, you can't make people buy a $200 toaster. Except now people are selling $200 toasters and, like, salt shakers, apparently. So I think it's the silliest idea. Yeah, I think it's clearly small. Like, having a su- smart salt shaker is so incredibly unnecessary. Poses unnecessary security risks in, like, the age of the Internet of Things. It's just, why, though? You know, it's just why, though? True. Yeah, it really advocates itself to be a really portable salt shaker somehow and also a portable speaker, but at that point... Why even bother? Why do I need a portable salt shaker? I'm not going to be in the restaurant. They're going to be like, here's some salt. <laughs> what if you were like on a picnic, though? You and I could just packets. bring in... I've never had a salt shaker where I felt like portability was an issue. <laughs> yeah, also true, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was one of their key features as well. So good point, Jesse. Yeah, okay. And then for our last question, which one of these three do you think the backers of the project would be the most disappointed with? Obviously, you know, we're not really the market for any of these. Two of us already know how to code, so you guys wouldn't be interested in Code Hero. 
None of us are particularly interested in smelling like bacon on a daily basis. And also, none of us can afford to spend $200 on a salt shaker. So really, we're not the target audience for any of these. But which target audience do you think is the most disappointed with the product they got? I'm going to say Code Hero because they didn't get a product. Yeah, Code Hero would make sense. I think the people who backed the meat soap knew exactly what they were getting and were quite happy with it because the project was funded successfully. And maybe the bougie people who weren't small really, really wanted it, you know? The very, very small demographic, but they still wanted it nonetheless. So for me, it also has to go to Code Hero. Yeah, to be fair, Smalt hasn't come out yet, so it could be wrong. But even just like on a presentation level, Smalt is so much better than Code Hero. It's miles away. So what if Smalt didn't come out? What would be worse, Smalt or Code Hero? I still think Code Hero because then like Smalt has had like consistent updates, a nice website, and Code Hero has like an awful website. It led people on for not only like a small amount of time, but actual years. And they could pretend they have progress when they don't, whereas I don't think Smalt is the case. Like, the things that they take pictures of seem fairly legitimate to me. So it's a lot harder to fake progress on Smalt than it is a game. But either way, if we agree that Code Hero is the worst Kickstarter project for number three, that also makes it the worst Kickstarter project of all time for essentially just not being a project. Because of that, the worst Kickstarter project of all time is Code Hero, a project that took eight years to produce a .2 version that constantly crashes and is terrible to play. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. This has been The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst. Join our Discord and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at BadWorstPod.